can, can everybody hear me? So good morning, everybody. Um, I would like to thank the organizers for this very nice conference, and I'd also like to thank you for being here. You know, it's a beautiful city with a beautiful beach, and you guys are here in a lecture hall. Um, I'm talking to you about the ground state of an ultra-cold Fermi gas of tilted dipoles in elongated uh, traps. I'm going to give you some experimental motivation and then show you very quickly the theoretical model you're using in this article. Show you a few results, including ex uh, direct exp uh, experimental comparison made by uh, our collaborators of ours. And then show you some, of some perspectives on this topic. Uh, first of all, our experimental motivation, uh, we're talking about trapped uh, dipoles, meaning that uh, they are in a harmonic potential in the three dimensions and they repel each other if they are put side by side and they attract each other if they are put head to tail. If they have a, more or less of a general orientation, so they interact like this. And that's the main important, uh, the main interaction you're caring about because you're dealing with fermions, so there is no S-wave interaction here. Uh, the interaction strength is controlled by this parameter here, which basically uh, compares the strength of the dipole-dipole interaction with uh, yeah, the, the, the poly uh, energy in the end. Um, so we have an experiment set up uh, which looks like that. We have our three axes here, but imaging can be made along a different axis, uh, different from the ones uh, of the traps. And dipoles can be arranged in an arbitrary direction with respect, say, to the Z uh, axis. So you can ch switch uh, the direction of the dipoles by changing theta and phi in, uh, in your arrangement. Uh, this has been done some time before, and it was the first experimental demonstration of the Fermi surface deformation on a dipolar Fermi gas. It has been predicted some time ago by people around Hampu, Rice University, and it has been experimentally detected and shown by people in Francesca Fellaino's group. And what they did is that they precisely just changed the orientation of the magnetic field, and they compared the aspect ratio in K space, the, the elongation in K, Z versus Kx, what they show is when you're going to, when you're moving in your direction, you're changing the, the orientation of the dipoles, it happens that the um, Fermi space changes its orientation. So uh, one, you get an ellipsoid, and two, the ellipsoid uh, moves, it rotates along with the V field. Um, these are experimental dots, and the crosses here are the theory that they could compare at the time there is there had no uh, there had been no theory for the intermediate points. Here you have a magnetic field along the z-axis, and here you have magnetic field along x-axis. So the a proper comparison was lacking between for for say uh, different values of the orientation angle. Uh, they did also time of flight exper experiments in this particular in particular two. Uh, setups, and they could uh, easily compare with the theory, but uh, again, in the in intermediate uh, cases, there is no possibility to compare. Um, well, based uh, interesting, interested in that problem, we were looking at uh, Fermi gases from a semi-classical point of view. Uh, this is just uh, the kinetic uh, trap and dipole-dipole direct and exchange terms. The direct term is the one responsible for the deformation in real space, the cloud deformation, and the exchange term is the one responsible for the k-space deformation, the one that uh, Hanpu and collaborators first considered some time ago. Um, well, we built our theory based uh, on the theoretical background laid up by Kazimierz Krzyzewski, and we use a very simple lancet for the uh, Wigner function is just a heavy side function. Let's say if our particle is inside, it's you uh, you have uh, full uh, occupation. If it's outside, then it's zero. It's just a heavy side function, and the rotation of the magnetic field is included 
in these matrices here. You can either have a k squared or you can have a r squared depending on the rotation. So if, if your magnetic field rotation is embodied here in these functions, I will spare you the details, but I hope you believe me. And the main physical scenarios you are interested in is, okay, we wanted to rule out, rule out, rule out the, the, the spherical Fermi sphere, but then we, we just consider this, that possibility too. Uh, the second possibility we consider is to have an ellipsoid, but not oriented along the, the magnetic field. And the third one is that we have an ellipsoid and it does rotate along with the magnetic field as the experiment uh, showed that it does. Uh, okay, we then calculated the energy for these three configurations and what we found out is that the red curve here is the one corresponding to the C case, the case in which the uh, ellipsoid rotates along the magnetic field, it is the one with the lowest energy. And we changed, uh, say, different angles, uh, say for fixed phi, we changed theta, for fixed theta, we changed phi, and all of the configurations shows that this is the lowest energy scenario. Uh, so take home message, if you have a weakly dipolar system, and then you rotate a magnetic field, the surface, the Fermi surface will rotate along with it. What we found out is, okay, this is typical for, for say, erbium, which is the, the uh, magnetic atom in which f with which the experiment was performed. If you take this in, uh, for, say, something which is strongly um, dipolar, you might get not only a rotation, but you get uh, uh, by aligning the magnetic f the, the dipoles along um, this direction, you might get the system to be to uh, have a, a say a larger volume of the of the Fermi uh, ellipsoid. Uh, we then com made a direct comparison with the experiment with data from 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 the group of Francesco Ferlaino, and what we found out is that uh, the aspect ratio really does change with theta and theory can actually reproduce quite well the results that uh, the experiments show. There is some discrepancy here. Uh, this discrepancy goes back to the fact that um, for, proper, uh, for proper comparison we, sh we would need a dynamical theory. We, because the experimental data is real space aspect ratio for time equals 12 milliseconds, which is actually a long time, but not long enough for the moment on space deformation to reflect that. And therefore, we see some discrepancy here. At this point, is this thing working? Yeah. At this point, for theta equals zero and for theta equal 90, we do have theory, and we can show that it hits right on top of the Experiment, uh, experimental data, but in between we still need a dynamical theory. Uh, yes, my message was actually quite fast, and uh, one th thing that we have not yet done, it has not yet been done, is to take the time of flight dynamics so that you can actually make this proper comparison here, and for different theta and different phi. Actually this somewhat, uh, ex uh, this experiment was, I think, the first in which people tuned the magnetic field and by that tuned the dipole-dipole the interaction too. But since then, people have, have been working with uh, similar systems, say with uh, uh, quantum droplets of dipole-dipole systems, which they also can tune the magnetic field and by that change the, uh, the the orientation of the whole cloud, and I think there has been some uh, work on the group of uh, silica loss per cows in which she can tune uh, both the direction and uh, the strength of the electric field so that uh, we can expect also for uh, polar molecules uh, that the tunability of the of the interaction uh, by means of the of the orientation to play an important role. Uh, Yes, one thing that remains open, this is also a picture from the Francesco Ferlaino group uh, from 2014, is that uh, for
for finite, for large temperature, you don't expect uh, the anisotropy of the interaction to play any role. But if um, but if the temperature is lower, then lower is that's what you expect if you want to do say superfluid uh, Fermi gases. Then this plays an important role, and this has not yet been considered. So there are a few interesting th interesting things which are still which are still open. And yes, I mean I wanted to be quite fast. Uh, I want to thank the organizers for this very very nice. Um, in a very nice atmosphere for doing physics and talking about physics here. I want to thank especially the directors, Leonardo Falani, Tommaso Macri, Christophe Salomon, and Luis Santos. Um, I want to acknowledge my collaborators too, people from Belgrade, uh, Anton and Vlada. Vladimir Valigi is actually the PhD student who made most of the theoretical work in here. I want to thank our experimental collaborators too, Lohian Choma, Simon Baia, Manfred Mark, and Francesca Ferlaino. Uh, I want to acknowledge people in Kaiserslautern, meaning Axel Pastor too. These are the guys who are, have been working a little bit around with me. We have a few posters out there if you, people are interested. Just drop a uh, pass by so we can talk a little bit. Uh, of course, and thank the people who put up everything together and who put the money, who pay us. And yeah, and all of you guys for your attention too. Thank you. Thanks, Esther, for your presentation and also for staying on time. So we have time for questions.